Hello, dear friends. Today, I want to talk about Transgender Nation. Um, it's a film on Hulu. It's like a made-for-TV sort of like movie thing. Uh, that's exactly what it is. It's a movie. I'm, hmm? Basically, it's a movie about um, transgender people in the world and just how they're treated, how they're seen. Um, I think the movie's supposed to be like normalizing people, transgender people in society. I don't, I don't know. The point is that I, I watched this movie and just had to take notes and had to like, I don't want to make an informed dis decision about it. I don't, the whole point is that I'm trying to summarize it for you, tell you what it did right, did what it did wrong, and how I think it will impact people who might not know too much about the trans, com trans community um, and all of that. So here we go. Disclaimer, I'm reading a script. So I'm looking off to the side a little bit. Also, um, this is my own take on the movie. I do intentionally leave out information that I don't feel is pertinent to this video. Um, and thus it may seem like I'm skewing the perspective of the movie, but um, most of the things in the film are things that I already know personally and I'm passing on in summary to you. So if you think I'm leaving something out, it's because of that. And it's most likely because I don't have enough time to get into it in this short video. I also ask you to keep in mind that terms are, and culture is ever-changing based on location, so anything that I say may or may not apply to your specific location at the time that you're watching this. Transgender Nation is a documentary about the many definitions of gender and the experiences trans people, transgender people go through as a way to convey to people who may not know or understand what being transgender means. Um, how it di differs from sexuality, the different ways people experience gender, or lack thereof, and the ways people can experience more than one gender at once. The film also covers a, the biological process for people who may require a more scientific basis um, to understand what is happening. So it took me about two hours to watch this entire movie through because I kept pausing to take notes and write down my thoughts. Um, I really wanted to get a sense of what the movie was and was was and wasn't trying to do, um, and get a sense of what the movie did right to educate people and how it could affect people who are maybe against trans rights. This particular film is produced by Warren Croyle, who also produced H.H. H. Holmes' original Evil, um, which is also on my watch list for a completely different reason. I just, I think he produces a whole bunch of TV movies, um, because all of his other credits are for like alien conspiracy movies. I, most of which I've seen floating around Hulu and Amazon and, and stuff like that. Similarly, Philip Gardner, the director, has credits about um, exorcisms and other paranormal things. So I think they really took what they knew from producing those sorts of movies to and, and applied it to this, even though it's kind of a completely different topic. The narration was almost eerie, slow, and concise, just voice narration over related, questionably related, uh, video footage, not unlike what we see in like a TV movie about alien conspiracies, so it just felt really weird to me. I didn't really like the style of narration, it felt cold and disconnected, which assuming the narrator isn't really trans makes sense in a way, but to someone who's watching the movie to learn, um, they might find the narrator's voice is uninviting and flat out boring to listen to, especially with the many breaks in his trains of thought to let the dramatic theme music thematic music, play over the visuals for a few seconds. This movie could have easily been half the time, I think, if he had just put all those brain thoughts together and um, hadn't paused so often. But I guess that's what you have to do when you have to fill an hour time slot and you're trying to keep it simple. But now getting to the meat of the content. I am going to focus much less on the quality of writing, film techniques, etc., like all of that. Um, I want to go into what the movie did right, what they did wrong, and how their words could impact those who might not be educated on this topic. Quote, in this film, you're going to lift the veil on the world of the transgender." End quote. Great opening statement. Sure. They go on to define transgender through the lens of the narrator. Quote, I, the narrator, have been born a male, but I may feel like I should really be female. I will therefore identify myself as a female, regardless of what my sexual organs are. End quote. This begins the separation of what the mind thinks from the body and an important step in understanding the trans community. Another important step is separating the word transgender from transsexual. If people want to physically transition, they are transsexual, while those who only go through psychological and social transition are transgender. Transgender is sometimes seen as a third gender that is not male or female. I will give them credit for mentioning that not everyone wants to physically or medically transition. Quote, 
Transgender covers trans women and trans men who wish to be identified as opposite their birth sex. It may also cover people who are non-binary, that is, they are neither sex by birth." End quote. Initially, it seemed like they were lumping intersex and non-binary people together, explaining that non-binary people have operations in which their parents, quote, choose a sex for their child after they are born, but they do make the separation later on, so I give them a pass on that. They define intersex as having both sexual organs, meaning they are non-binary, but not inherently transgender. Other examples of non-binary identities that they give are bigender, pangender, gender fluid, and agender, none of which necessarily have biological connotations. Cisgender, on the other hand, is defined as identifying as the sex one was born as, still bearing no biological connotations if one believes themselves to be the exact gender they were bi biologically born to be, even if that is transgender or non-binary, technically making them cisgender. I've seen a lot of arguments on this. I've seen it go every which way in the transgender community, in the cisgender community, whatever you want to call it. The movie doesn't really cover this, um, but I do want to bring it up as something to be aware of. In 1965, an article called Sexual Hygiene and Pathology was published and became the first distinct use of the term transgenderism over the word transsexualism. The difference is in how people perform their gender versus their sexual orientation. Sexuality has nothing to do with transvest transvesticism. Can't say that. A transgenderist, a transgenderist, um, wants to cross genders but not have physical surgery to alter their body. As the world sprang forward into the 80s and 90s, culture changed and so did appropriate terms to refer to trans people. New definitions grew to include transgenderists, transsexuals, cross dressers, and anyone transitioning. Whatever that's supposed to mean. Non binary and gender nonconformity became completely connected to being gay, and FTM female to male, and MTF, male to female, came to mean people who have medically transitioned. 1990s transsexuals were people who medically transitioned while transgender remained a purely psychological transition. Fast forward again to the 2000s, and terminology evolved to mainly use trans man, trans woman, trans masculine, and trans feminine, moving further away from the biological sex identifiers and further towards gender identification and self-expression. Once again, older terms fell to the wayside and the trans community began to reject some of these um, as offensive or inappropriate. The trans community today rejects the term transsexual, claiming their identity has nothing to do with sexual partners. The nuances of transsexual versus transgender and how each term relates to sexuality, gender, and medically or trans socially transitioning is rooted in how the modern trans community feels about the definitions. Terminology and culture evolves, people grow and change, reclaiming words that used to mean derogatory things. For example, the word gay used to explicitly mean happy or joyful. Uh, joyous until people started using it in a way that uh, to, as a way to hurt those who identified as homosexual. Queer was previously a word that the LGBTQ community despised. While this is the case in some places, gay and queer have been reclaimed by the community and are used widespread across the world to bring together in celebration us together in celebration of our identities. The word transvestite is often used to describe people who like to wear clothing of the opposite sex, most often applied to crossdressers. The movie quotes Michael A. Gilbert from York University in Toronto, Canada. Quote, a person who has an apparent gender identification with one sex, and who has certainly been birth designated as belonging to that sex, but who wears the clothing of the opposite sex because it is that of the opposite sex. End quote. They make a good point to add that trans people don't want to be seen as crossdressers. Even when in drag, it is just an quote, over-the-top, dramatic, and comedic, end quote, performance that has become synonymous with the LGBTQ community. This is where I want to talk about the sex orientation scale. I I didn't know about this before this movie, but I'm really glad they included it. Um, this has nothing to do with sexual orientation, but rather biological sex. There are six categories on the SOS for factoring the intensity of gender dysphoria, essentially, in which the sixth level is the most intense and qualifies for HRT and SRS. Crossdresser and drag performers are not counted on the scale because they do not share, they do not desire to physically change anything about themselves, only their appearance. Changes in their appearance go against societal norms and what is called cisgender normativity, so people often group them with trans people, but since they only desire to wear clothing of the opposite gender while continuing to identify as the gender they were assigned at birth. Identities besides cisgender that do fall in the SOS include, but are not limited to, gender fluid, and uh, androgynous, intergender, and pangender. 
And again, none of these have to do any have anything to do with sexual orientation. Um, sexual orientation, according to the movie, quote, simply describes a person's physical attraction to another person. It is not identity or personal sense of being a man or a woman or other, end quote. I think this is a good definition. It, I don't see anything glaringly wrong with it. It makes the distinction between gender and sexuality quite clear and brings it, uh, attention to the fact that trans people are just that. People. Men, women, anything else that they use to describe themselves. They are all people. And now a quote from Susan DeWitt Hall, a Christian writer. Quote, Jesus is like us in every respect. Don't brush the sentence off casually. Let it sink in deep to the core of who you are. God is like us in every respect. He's like the transgender woman who is worried she'll be murdered while walking to her car after work. He's in the broken-hearted gay man who can't attend the church of his childhood. He's like the bisexual, intersex person who doesn't conform to gender norms and endures the side, snide looks and sniggers of stranger. He is like these people, just as much as the heterosexual man who is comfortable performing his gender in a way that this society finds acceptable. And just like God, trans people have sexual desires. The movie breaks sexual orientation down into more, four main categories. Androphilic, those who are attracted to men. Gynophilic, those attracted to women bisexual, those attracted to both sexes, and asexual, those who are attracted to neither. I found these particular breakdowns interest- this particular breakdown interesting because their full definitions of androphilic and gynophilic were not, was not limited to people of one sex liking the opposite. Rather, they define them as people who like men and people who like women, um, meaning that homosexual people fall under these categories as well. Bisexual people, on the other hand, like people of both sexes, barring their gender identity. There has been much debate among the LGBTQ community about the differences between bisexual and pansexual, whether bisexual can mean someone who is sexually attracted to more than two genders, as the prefix bi would connote. Why wouldn't they just identify as pansexual, where the prefix pan would denote that they were attracted to all genders? The movie's definition of bisexual takes out gender from the equation completely, making it a broad statement that encompasses the nuances between the two sexualities and their most basic definitions by pairing it down to a biological factor. If there really are only two sexes, then bisexual people are attracted to both of them regardless of their gender performance. The psychological differences between men and women are not immediately apparent, but the biological ones are. Besides the obvious external sex characteristics, trans women tend to have longer androgen receptors, making them less effective at binding testosterone for the body to read. The difference starts with the theory about hormonal development in the womb. It has been theorized that changes in fetal hormone levels produce changes in synaptic density and other differences. Um, I, I won't pretend to know what synaptic de density is, but I know it has something to do with how the brain grows and develops. Um, and the movie confirms research about the brain mapping density of trans women and how they share the similar growth to that of a cisgender woman. So I can only assume that the same is true for trans and cisgender men. Due to an inaccessible and mis misunderstanding medical community, LGBTQ patients are often frustrated with their care, pro care professionals, more often than not having to educate them on trans topics themselves. Um, there are many cases of medical professionals describing people HRT because they are trans, not because they exhibit symptoms that can only be alleviated by such treatment. People who do not wish to medically transition need just as much attention as those who do. The movie lists statistics about rates of suicide, discrimination and harassment in the workplace and health healthcare system, homelessness, rejection in home life, discrimination based in religion, poverty, TERFs, sexual harassment, and unemployment. These are only a few of the reasons trans people are shut out from cisnormative society. Susan McBride describes her own experience. Quote, The best way I can describe being transgender for myself is a consistent feeling of homesickness, an unwavering ache in the pit of my stomach that only goes away when I can be seen and affirmed in the gender I've always felt myself to be. And unlike homesickness with location, which eventually diminishes as you get used to a new home, this homesickness only grows with time and separation." End quote. Typically, when people are homesick, the people around them do their best to comfort them by making their surroundings more familiar. Supporting trans people as they make their bodies more familiar is the best way to alleviate negative symptoms. Trans people feel enough uncomfortableness within themselves. Dis disapproval from those they love and trust the most only makes it worse. As time goes on and acceptance from both outside and inside increases, the negative feelings dissipate until they are all but a small flame on the back burner of the mind. Outside, there is a more widespread societal acceptance due to media helping to decrease stigma surrounding mental health and transitioning. The movie closes out with an uplifting quote from Ban Ki-moon, the Secretary General of the UN. 
Quote, but whether we understand what transgender is, or how it feels, or where it came from, we have a duty to show compassion to treat them as equals. Being transgender is not a criminal act. It hurts nobody. Hate hurts. Now that we've got the general summary out of the way, um, and some basic analysis, I want to talk more about what the movie did right, what it did wrong, and how I think it works to educate those who may be less informed, or who may be considering changing their point of view. They give very straight forward definitions, breaking down the history of how appropriate terms have evolved, and giving people an idea of what is and what is not acceptable to say today. Um, in doing this, it also asks people to think ahead to the future, um, to be more aware of the changes as they happen and adjust accordingly. They also attempt to garner sympathy for those who struggle to navigate the health system, um, religious institutions, and family life. Susan McBride's account is supposed to shed a uh, light on how some trans people feel inside their own bodies, something that is extremely hard to describe to people unless they've experienced it themselves. Um, I think it does quite well to do this, actually, putting it into a context um, a wider audience can relate to. Not everyone can feel what it is like to be trans, but everyone can feel what it's like to be home homesick, regardless of gender identity or sexual orientation. Um, I, there isn't really much I would consider that the movie did wrong. Um, whoever researched for it did their job well. But there are a couple of things I want to address. The movie mostly focused on experiences of transgender women, which I truly believe is a good thing. Um, especially because transgender women, especially trans women of color, um, are one of the most marginalized groups of people in the world. Um, but the visuals of the movie between the random b-roll of people walking around in busy cities and, and, and walking around on a beach, um, they followed three trans women, I believe it was. It was like two or three. Um, I was really busy taking notes and not really paying attention to the, the visual aspect of things once I saw that it was just gonna be like random b-roll footage. Um, but they, they followed these trans women throughout the movie as they did like various tasks. Some of them were fine, such as like cooking or doing housework, but a majority of the scenes were um, trans women dressed in lingerie and like helping pe each other put on makeup and playing with a camera, which seems harmless at first until you consider how trans women are often sexualized and cast aside as being just an act behind closed doors. Um, perhaps the movie was trying to show trans women in a context they would um, people would understand and be more familiar with, like how they use Susan's quote to help people familiarize, themse familiarize themselves with how it feels to be trans through homesickness, but I do find that this does more harm than good. I don't believe that they were trying to say that trans people are only normal in sexual situations, I just think their ex execution was a bit off. If they had shown their sexualization point in maybe one, maybe two scenes of this and used everyday tasks for the rest, maybe that would change my mind about how I feel about how these scenes were used, but as it stands, that's just, those are my thoughts. People watching this documentary should come away with a better sense of the social and scientific aspects of the transgender community. While it doesn't cover each and every nuance of it, it does cover some of the most important topics people have debated over the years. What exactly does transgender mean and how does it differ from transsexual? Um, does being transgender automatically make you gay? What, just what exactly are the differences between all of the different genders and sexualities? Is gender all in our heads? It answers all these questions well, and I think anyone who does not know the answers to these questions before watching this movie should feel educated enough to make an informed decision about whether or not trans people really are as foreign and as alien as they thought. Anyways, that is all I have for you today. Um, I hope you found this somewhat informative. Uh, at least it showed up my suggested feed on Hulu, and I thought I'd give it a shot. Um, consider I do, I do identify as transgender myself, and I'm always looking out for content that gears towards educating the public, just to make sure that it's doing its job properly. So if you're new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below for new content like this every single week in your sub box, um, and the notification button so that you get notified when it does drop. And until next time, remember to stay cool, stay safe, and stay positive, and I will see you in the next video.